Well, good evening. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Be glad in it. This is Pastor Jonathan McKnight. Welcome to our 7.30 evening prayer call. For God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I'm thankful unto God for his goodness, his mercy, his kindness. It's amazing to be able to say that we have and we are living another day to be able to know that God is moving by his spirit, that God is moving by his power. And yet, we are still grateful for this opportunity to be able to share the word of God through prayer on this evening, knowing that not only is God good some of the time, he is good all the time. And we're just grateful unto God for what he has been doing for our life. We're grateful for the fact that we can come together as a unit, as a uh, team of United Prayer Warriors, Seeking the presence, the power, the anointing, and also the sincerity of walking into the realm of prayer. With that being said, I'm just getting ready to say a quick word of prayer. We're going to go into our session tonight, prayer that touches God's promises, prayer that touches God's promises. Tonight, God, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness towards us. It's another opportunity tonight to say to you, we are so grateful and we are so thankful unto you for all the things that you are doing and have done in our life. It's another evening to where we can be able to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain help in our time of need. We're grateful tonight for you being our God, for you being our King, for you being our Lord and our Savior over the universe, for you know God, there's nobody like you, and we're thankful that the words of the Lord said that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and we're thankful that you are still in control of every situation. God, there's so many needs throughout the world, throughout the earth. God, we need peace. We need protection. We need, oh God, your guidance. We need answers. God, we need your Holy Spirit, and we need your word to rule in our life. So tonight, we're asking you to be able to stand up and let God arise and all our enemies be scattered. We're thankful tonight that we have life because of you. And without you, we are nothing. But through you, we can do all things. We thank you that it's already done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. I am so grateful to God tonight for his goodness, his kindness, and his mercy towards us, fully understanding that God, one of the scriptures that we've used um, is Numbers 23 and 19. One of the scriptures that we use in our teaching, especially for part uh, one and two, is God is not a man that he should lie. He's the son of man that he should repent. He said it. He'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll make it good. We've been teaching about the promises, prayer that touches God's promises. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, until and or to the glory of God by us. We are to be so thankful and glad to know that in the promises, for all the promises of God, in him are yea and amen. And understanding how important we should know and walk into uh, the scriptures and the holy word of God, we have to be able to know that God is faithful. One of the things that I don't know how often I say it throughout the week, um, on even on a daily basis, that God is faithful. Um, he is so faithful to what he says he's going to do. Um, and when he is faithful to what he says he's going to do, we need to know that we can stand bold. We can stand with utmost confidence, knowing that God will do exactly what he says he will do. In the Bible, it lets us know that throughout the Bible, there are well over 8,000 promises from God, understanding that when God says he's going to do something, 
then we can stand on the promises of God and know that he will perform those things by which he says he's going to perform, not on our own accord, but we can understand that Philippians 4 and 13 says this, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. In other words, that's a promise that through Christ, the word of the Lord lets us know that he will strengthen us and we can stand on his promises, fully understanding that his promises are yea, his promises are amen, and we can count on the promises of God. One of the things uh, the Lord said to me to be able to share with you on tonight um, is this promise tonight. It comes from Isaiah 41 and 10, something I want you to look at. And I think you need and I need to rest in this promises. He said in Isaiah 41 and 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. I want to just stop there for a moment. Fear thou not. That's an instruction. And here's the reason why. Because I am with thee. I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Here's another promise. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let's look at this one verse alone. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not. That's something that we must do. So many times the enemy wants to carry us over into fear. He wants us to not trust the promises of God. He wants us to not believe the promises of God. He wants us to question whether or not God will do it for us. So many times, because uh, we are trusting God, the enemy wants you to pull away from the trust mode. Uh, that's something I told God earlier this year. I'm just in trust mode with him. I, I just feel like it's the safest thing. It's one of the most profound things that you and I could do. And that is, we go into trust mode in spite of the economy, in spite of the world itself, in spite of not knowing what, in many cases, what truth really is. So many times the enemy uh, in this world today, he has made truth the perspective of what people want to show you. Even through the media, even through social media, uh, the enemy wants to have his own perspective of, of truth. And many times a perspective of truth is really a persuasion, a perspective the enemy will show you something, trying to make you believe a certain way. But tonight, I challenge you to hear what the Lord is saying, because prayers that touches God's promises cannot touch the promises of God, and you're operating in the realm of fear or in the realm of doubt or in the realm of unbelief or in the realm of anxiety and stress. Yes, there are things to be concerned with. We're in that human nature many times. But the truth of the matter is, I want you to rest in Isaiah 41 and 10. I'm seriously feeling the anointing for somebody tonight. Maybe you're facing a deadline. Maybe your family is facing a situation. Maybe you yourself uh, are counting uh, the purpose time clock. And what I mean by the purpose time clock, I mean that by now you thought this would have been done. By now. You thought that would have been done. By now, you thought you would have been further alone. By now, you thought perhaps this would not still be an issue or circumstance in your life. By now, you thought maybe the fight would have been over or the fight would have been finished or the struggle would have been over. By now, you thought that this sickness would have been gone. You've been praying. You've been asking God to move it. You've been asking God to help you. By now, you perhaps thought some things were different. But tonight, we're going to rest in one verse that has multiple promises in it. One verse that's telling us, first of all, fear thou not, Isaiah 41 and 10. Somebody needs to grab Isaiah 41 and 10 tonight. You need to grab this. You need to embrace it. You need to, you need to squeeze it. You need to uh, strengthen it and understand that God is, is going to work situations out for you and do some things for you. And sometimes... 
And I want you to understand the scripture says this, fear thou not. I can't touch the promises of God. I can't touch God's hand to move in fear. It says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Here's something we need to understand. He's with me. He's with me when things are well. God is with us when things are not going well. God is with us when we have no clue how it's going to work out. God is with us when it seems like the enemy perhaps have us outnumbered. God is with us when it seems like you're trying to get the job, but you don't have the educational qualifications. God is with us when it seems like there have been struggles and mistakes and there's been challenges and things to fight that you see and darkness and realms that you don't understand. It says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. That's a promise. I am with thee. I am with thee. God is with us. Every time I say it tonight, it brings a greater level of confidence. Every time I say God is with us, the Bible says in the book of Romans 8 and 31, scripture, I learned, I learned this scripture, even though it's in the word of God and through the word of God, I learned it from my, my spiritual mentor, my father, Romans 8 and 31, he would say it, he would teach it, he would preach it and say, what can we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? It might seem like it's more of them than what you have, a backup or support. But I am with thee. And if God is with you, and if God is with us, there's more help we have with God than any amount or number that man could try and come against you. So fear thou not. I am with thee. That's a promise. It says, be not dismayed. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't be stressed out. Don't walk around in anxiety. Don't walk around in fear. Do not allow the enemy because of your, your circumstances to torment you through situations, challenges, and tests. He says, I'm with thee, for I am thy God. Not only did he say, I'm with thee, he said, for I am thy God. In other words, I'm the ruler. I'm in control. I'm the God through everything. I'm the God in everything. I'm God over everything. I am thy God. In other words, there's no need to have another God. Your bank account can't be your God. Your job can't not be your God. Your credit report cannot be your God. People surely cannot be your God. He says, don't get it twisted. Don't lose the focus of the reality of truth, I'm trying to let you know that when you pray, you will release the promises of God of understanding that, Pastor, I can't deal with the fear because God is with me and he's already positioned himself in my life. The Lord said, if I positioned myself as God over your life, then you got to trust me that you're the God, that I'm the God that rules your life. He said, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Then he says, here comes another promise. Because I'm your God, I will strengthen thee. Okay? So the first promise is, when you don't fear, I am with thee. Let's look at this one verse. That's a promise. Another responsibility is to be not dismayed. You got to understand that sometimes that the promises of God are going to rule in our life. We need to follow the principles so we can release and have the promises. Many times the promises of God being released in our life causes there to be a certain level of obedience as well as accountability because you can't expect God to answer you and you're in fear. The Bible says God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. You can't pray and think because you are afraid or because you are stressed out. God's going to answer you because you're on stress mode. No, God's going to answer us because we're on and we're in trust mode. So fear thou not. Accountability, responsibility. I am with thee. Promise. Be not dismayed. 
accountability. For I am thy God. Fact. I am thy God. Second promise, I will strengthen thee. In other words, I'll give you strength to go through circumstances so my promises can move you into a greater position. I will strengthen thee. All right? So that's promise number two. Yea, remember, we have already said in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yea, here is yea in Isaiah 41 and 10, and in him, amen, which means let it be so. So I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will. Let it be so. I will help thee. My God, look at this, how it's coming along. Promise number three, I will help thee. Promise number one is I am with thee. In other words, we are connected in this together. Fear will disconnect us from walking into fellowship and the promises of God being released over your life. Promise number two, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. That's promise number three. Promise number four comes like he says, yea, again, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So right there in that one verse, there are four promises that God will do if we can just avoid fear. Fear is your enemy. Fear can do nothing to promote the promises of God from being released in your life. That's why we have to make sure that we do not hit the panic button when we're looking for God to do something in our life. Hebrews 10 and 23 says it this way, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. In other words, we got to be able to hold on to what God has said we got to be able to hold on to the profession of our faith without wavering. Seems like faith is supposed to be the highest level of profession. When you're a professional at something, that means you're supposed to be good at it. You're supposed to know what to do. When so many times you use that, that expression, professional, that means you've been trained or supposedly be trained in that area. You know how to act like a professional when things come against you because you have the profession of our faith. We hold fast to what God says he's going to do, and we treat it as if though it is our profession without wavering. For he is faithful, that promise, and that's how we can hold on. We can hold on to what God has promised us because he's faithful. He said, I will swear by myself. I hold myself accountable before one jot or before one tittle or my word fail heaven and earth will pass away. Why? Because I am faithful to what I say. You can count on me. I'm reliable. You can acknowledge the fact that if I said it, I'm going to do it. If I spoke it, I'm going to make it good. The biggest challenge and test in our life throughout life itself is this, the ability to be able to hold on to God's promises and don't allow fear to make you lose your grip. Don't even allow time to make you lose your grip. Don't allow people. Don't allow circumstances. Don't allow your own personal inadequacies or flaws to stop your belief system in God because tonight, we're going to pray in such a way that the promises of God will be released. And sometimes the promises, if you look at the book of Daniel, the 10th chapter, uh, when Daniel, the prayer warrior or prayer warriors in the Bible, everybody knew Daniel was known by his prayer life. And there was a time and there was a situation when Daniel had prayed about some things. And it was time for the answer to come. It was time for the deliverance to come. But the enemy will try to maximize the time between the wait and the manifestation. The angels of the Lord came to Daniel. Daniel knew by now. The Bible says he was weeping. That Bible says he was crying out to God. The angel of the Lord, the messenger of God came to Daniel and said, Daniel, Daniel, from the first day you prayed, we heard you. But the prince of Persia, the enemy, darkness, the warfare realm was trying to hold up your blessing. 
Matter of fact, it was such a fight over your answer. It was such a fight over your breakthrough. It was such a fight over the promise that God had promised you until the enemy tried to get between heaven and earth to block in the realm your answer from being released. It took a recruitment angelically. Gabriel and Michael, warring angels, had to fight for the answer. Not for the answer to come, but for the answer to be released. There are some things right now, and I'm going to speak it into the atmosphere, that are long overdue in your life and long overdue in our life and my life. And just because it has not manifested, it does not mean that you have missed. Just because you don't have it in your hand right now, it does not mean that it's not coming. Do you not know that every time a promise is manifest in our lives, it becomes a testimony of faith? It builds people's faith strength. It causes them to trust in God more. That's why the enemy don't want and doesn't want the promises of God to be released in our life. Because every time God does something for us, it builds spiritual muscles and faith. It causes us to step on the promises of God. Because why? We know God is faithful. He'll do exactly what he says to do. Matter of fact, there are some things that the enemy has been holding up now. There are some things that probably have been due to us since 2021. And the enemy is yet fighting it like it, it's not going to come and it's due right now in 2022. Matter of fact, there were some things that should have been in your hands by now, should have manifest in our lives by now. And there's a fight over it because sometimes when the manifestation of God's promises come over your life, it builds other people's faith when they see what God can do. So I am right now on this call before I get ready to go into the realm of prayer. I'm binding every satanic delay. I'm binding every demonic interference. I'm coming against anything that's between the promise and the manifestation of God's power, any negative force, any dark force, any evil force, any satanic angel, any satanic interruption that's trying to stop your peace or stop your healing, that's fighting for you never to receive the promises of God. We are binding it now. The Bible says what we bind on earth can be bound in heaven and what we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And tonight we are praying that the promises of God are touched by God. We're asking God to dispatch warring angels over you, over your family, over your workplace, over your finances, over your children, over your destiny, over your grandchildren. We're decreeing and we're declaring that God is going to do some things in, through, and around our life. Right now, it might be held up, but it won't be held out any longer. We're speaking it right now that God is going to bombard us with because we're going to pray for his promises because we understand that according to Psalm 91, he has given his angels. I've been trying to get people to emphasize the scripture says his angels charge over you because there are other types of warfare angels that are carrying on um, the spirit of darkness to try to prevent you, wants you to get weary, wants you to give up, wants you to start getting into agreement that if it hasn't come by now, maybe God is not going to do it. If it hasn't opened up by now, maybe it was never meant for me. And sometimes the enemy tries to capitalize on the period of time that you're waiting. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, he says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Sometimes God causes us to wait so we can become stronger, so we can become greater. Because the true test of faith, the true test of the promises of God, let me put it to you this way. The old people used to say in the church, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Well, what if the deadline was last week? What if the deadline was Sunday? What if the deadline, and you still are waiting on Tuesday? Because you know what? God has the ability to let you know he shows up, but when he shows up, he dominates. When he shows up, he removes. When he shows up, he begins to open doors in your life. Some of the doors that we create ourselves, which is can turn out to be a travesty. So many people, they try to put God on a timeline. They try to put God on a deadline. They'll say things like, God, if you haven't done it by then, they'll try to create a promise gamble. God, if you haven't done it by then, then I guess you're just not going to do it. Well, you can't put God on a time clock. You can't put God on a schedule. How can you put God 
How can you put infinity on a schedule? How can you schedule someone that's everywhere already at the same time? He says, I'm with thee. I'll strengthen thee. And sometimes the reason why he has to strengthen us is because we're waiting. And sometimes we'll get weary. Sometimes, let's just be honest, it's not always easy waiting on God. Sometimes you get fatigued. Sometimes you get tired, especially when it seems like the enemy is winning, especially when it seems like uh, everybody seems to be getting ahead of you. You wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He'll strengthen our heart. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He's really rejuvenating and rebuilding us to be able to stand flat-footed and solid on the word of God. So that we can soar like the eagle that God has called you to be. Eagle is in your DNA. Being able to fly and shift to the next level. I want you to understand this. That the prayers that touch God and God's promises. And they made it clear. As I get ready to close out, I'm going back to Daniel 10. They made it clear. It said the prince of Persia. Notice he did not say the king of Persia. He said the prince of Persia, which means there are levels in the dark world. He'll never be the king of Persia. He's the prince of Persia, the warfare atmosphere that the enemy tried to get in. He withstood us. But guess what? He might have withstood for a moment, but he couldn't stop the manifestation of God's promises. I challenge you to bless God right now, that in the midst of your waiting, he's still working. Can you just say that right now as I get ready to pray with you? I'm waiting, but God is still working. I'm waiting, but God is still working. I'm going to say that again. I am waiting, but God is still working. Everything might not be the report. Uh, from the doctor might not be exactly what I want it to be, but I'm waiting and God is still working. It might not seem like I have the, the financial wherewithal to do what I want to do. I'm waiting, but God is still working. It might not seem like your children. It might not seem like your call, your ministry, your purpose, your destiny. What God has called you to do is moving at the pace or at the position that you want it to be. I'm waiting, but God is still working. And one thing I found out about God, when he does shows up and when he will show up, it will conquer the whole matter. He never shows up and loses. He shows up to bring glory to himself. Some things that we're going through, I can say it personally in my life, there's a lot of things that I've gone through in my life. I didn't understand why I had to go through that. I didn't understand why it had to be done that a particular way. But here's what I fully understood. It was all intended. It was all meant to bring God glory. And right now, as we get ready to pray to God and we get ready to count, call out to God on this prayer call on this evening, we're going to pray. And I believe that this prayer is going to touch and move the hand of God to where there will be an overflow of God's promises. If you have some of your blessed oil near you, I want you to grab that bottle. I want you to anoint yourself. I want you to get ready to touch and agree with us in faith, understanding this. And I'm closing with Second Peter 3 and 9. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. He's long-suffering to us, with, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, which means to turn and change your mindset. He's not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. He didn't allow us to be te tested for it to kill us, to wipe us out, or for us to perish. He literally have allowed some tests and some trials to come so that our mindset or we can be able to see him in a new and a greater way. And the base scripture one more time. Isaiah 41 and 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee, and be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee, the right hand of my righteousness. I'm going to say it like this, God has us, and God is in control. Here comes the promises. 
out with the fear and in with the promises. Out with the fear and in with God's promises. Father God, tonight we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. You're amazing, God, and you do amazing things. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you in all the earth, and we are grateful unto you tonight. First of all, God, we want to thank you for releasing the fact that you are with us. It's not your will for us to be up under stress. It's not your will for us to be up under anxiety. It's not your will for us to function in fear. Matter of fact, God, we repent for any day that fear was driving our decision. Anxiety, stress, panic, and not having patience like we should. We fully understand that there's never been a day that you've been out of control. There's never been a day that you have not known the answer. There's never been a day that the enemy came in and took over the matter. The devil is a liar. Every day that the world has existed, you have always been in control. And for that, we say thank you. I ask you, God, tonight, as I feel your precious gift of faith in your spirit, that you settle the hearts, the minds, and the souls of people, the one that the enemy wants them to operate in panic and make them feel the responsibility to have to do something about their situation. We do know what we need to do. We need to fear not. We need to understand that we cannot allow emotional chaos to drive us and reposition us out of your will. In you we live. In you we move. In you we have our existence. We can do all things according to Philippians 4 and 13 through Christ that strengthens us. You said in Isaiah 59 and 19 that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it. We command in the name of Jesus that there's a blood wall of protection. We decree and we declare that the miracles that you already have for our lives, we will not miss them while we're in a warfaric weight. I'll say it again. While we are in a warfaric weight, we are continually praying unto you. We thank you for angelic backup. We thank you, God, for ministering angels and warring angels. We come against the principalities of darkness. We cast down every wicked imagination. We pull down every stronghold. Anything that exalts itself against God, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we're coming against the forces of evil, the forces of darkness in this world. Thank you right now for Gabriel and Michael. Thank you right now for an angelic divine army from you that everything that seems to be held up, delayed, detoured, or even perhaps even denied, we decree a manifested release that it will now, your promises, be delivered and manifested, oh God, by your divine angels. We come against war. We come against the loss of innocent lives. We come against evil rulership and leadership that's willing to cause there to be uh, social havoc and loss of life and, God, panic. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of terrorism, every spirit of attack of the innocent. Protect our military troops, our first responders. Protect the troops that are fighting on our borders, that are fighting in Ukraine, that are coming against the forces against Russia. We decree and we declare, God, for a strategic breakthrough for the loss of innocent lives. I decree and I declare that you said in your words, for the wicked shall be cut off. We thank you, God, right now that your eyes are on the wicked. Your hand is controlling those. And I decree and I declare, whoever and however you need to make this and them an example, not to come against the plan of God. And God, I thank you right now for victory. We come against every form of sickness, disease, infirmity, 
all forms of blood clots, all forms of diabetes, heart attack, high blood pressure, all forms of tumors and cysts. And God, we come against block arteries, heart attacks and strokes. We come against, oh God, and we bind uh, sickness and disease, even in lungs and asthma and COVID and Delta variant, Omicron. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you protect, oh God, in this COVID crisis. I decree and I declare now, even in our children, God, even if there is contamination in our food or our water, it will not penetrate and take residence in our body, our blood cells, our blood. We decree that in the name of Jesus, we are covered by the blood of Jesus and by Jesus' stripes, we are here. We come against all forms of inflammation, all forms of pain, oh God, all forms of Oh, God, torment in our ligaments, in our bodies. We speak that our bodies are saturated with health so we can be the vessels of God to carry out your holy assignments for our life. We thank you, God, tonight that you'll protect our, oh, God, educators and school teachers. We know, God, that we this week is Teacher Appreciation Week, Education Appreciation Week, Educators Appreciation Week. Protect them as they, oh, God, help teach and train our children, give them strength and give them protection against the perils of evil. Give them every school campus, every school ground protection in the name of Jesus. Protect our youth, protect our children. I pray you keep them from, oh God, bullying, whether it's in school, whether it's cyber bullying. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Let them be focused according to the word of God. Let angels go with them every place. We send prayer to school. We decree that every campus is saturated by Oh, God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Save those that are lost. We pray, oh, God, for souls that need to be saved. We pray, God, that they will cry out, what must I do to be saved? We decree every stronghold, every demonic and satanic addiction that comes against the word of God, every inward struggle. Oh, God, we bind it in the name of Jesus. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. We decree and we declare that they'll be loose from the shackles in their mind and in their spirit, every chain and every feather that holds, oh God, the people of God and families in bondage. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We speak, oh God, peace to homes, peace to marriages, oh God, peace, just peace, oh God, peace, oh God. We come against domestic violence and all forms of abuse. We speak in the name of Jesus, freedom in the Holy Ghost to be able to fulfill the promises and the destiny of God. We pray for our military troops, our first responders, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, those who are helping others in hospice, in any form of medical facility, even the ones that are in alleys and homeless and need medical attention. I pray that you dispatch angels over them, the ones who are hungry and the many who don't have food, clothing, or water, or have shelter or a place to be able to live. I pray in the name of Jesus that you work miracles in their lives. We bind the spirit spirit of heaviness, depression, and oppression, the spirit of suicide. We decree and we declare by your spirit and by your power, God, that they understand that they have power to live. Say that we rebuke you and we bind you from bringing those thoughts to end their lives. I come against it now in the name of Jesus, and we speak life, we speak health, we speak salvation, deliverance, and victory. God, those who are dealing with poverty and lack and emptiness and don't have a way for ends to meet, I decree that Jehovah Jireh will come, the Lord God that provides from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Open the windows of heaven and rain down blessings, showers of blessings in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that we need wisdom. We need your guidance. God, we need right connections. Connect us to people that love you. Connect us to people who are true to our lives, who love you, who love us, who want to understand and need to understand that iron sharpens is iron. We bind all this seat. We bind every wrong motive. We bind it in the name of Jesus, and we speak now victory for he who the Son said, we sharpen our eyes so that we can see which way to go and what to do. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for favor. Thank you for guidance. Give us understanding. Give us insight that we will move and live and shift in your will. We thank you for victory. We thank you for greater. There's so many families, God, that are grieving. So many families that have experienced and is experienced loss, even on today or yesterday or last week or last month. Those right now who loved ones, some loved ones have disappeared. They don't know where they are. I pray, God, that you work favorably in those situations. We thank you, God, for justice in our 
political system and our judicial system. We pray that you cover and bind all corruption in our White House, in our in our judicial, in our Supreme Court, every level of appellate court. We decree and we declare that the plans of the enemy will not work. We thank you, God, tonight, and we praise your holy name that you are with us and that you're our God. We love you from the depths of our soul. We tell you tonight, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Without you, we're nothing, but through you, we can do all things. God, we want to represent you in such a way to where we're in trust mode. We trust you when we can't trace you. We believe you when we don't know when, where, or how. We thank you for doing things in our lives every day. I just heard you say miracles are being dispatched. We receive them. We don't follow you for miracles. We follow you because you're God and that we love you. But we thank you for the miracles. I decree and I declare that you get all the glory. You get all the honor. God, you get all the praise. We pray this prayer according to Mark 11. And whatsoever things we desire when we pray, we believe that we shall receive them and we shall have them. And we thank you that it's already done. Bless families and bless children. Bless our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Prayer that touches God's promises. You know we're nowhere close to all the promises that God has for us. It's well over 8,000. Just in that one verse we showed you four. But I'm telling you something. I'm determined to remain in trust mode with God. And I'm determined not to miss anything else that God has for me. You be blessed. You be safe. You be wise. And understand, be your best for God. And watch God do his best for your life. May God bless you. May God bless your families. Pastor Jonathan, good night. God bless you.